In this example, we want to take a look at a civil cell provided in the Bentley Civil Examples workspace. In particular, we're going to be looking at the basic T intersection, and as delivered, it is currently an urban entrance, and we want to convert this to a rural entrance with a different pavement structure. And so I want to show how you can take a civil cell that is delivered from another source and be able to customize that to the environment that your particular client requires. So the first thing I want to do is I want to take a look at how the prompts are constructed for the particular civil cell. And so to do that, I want to take a look at the Civil Model tab in Project Explorer. And if I expand down in this DGN library to the Civil Cell Basic T intersection, which is the one we want to study, I want to take a look at the references that are named. And so you're going to see two references. And I want to maybe take a screenshot or write those names down so that we can keep those prompts consistent. Uh, but we have two prompts here, secondary road center line and through road edge of pavement. Those names are significant because those are the prompts that the users will see when they go to place this civil cell. And we would like to try to remain consistent when we reconstruct this. In order to be able to change the linear template drops or the pavement structure, surface templates, those types of things, we have to drop the civil cell status, delete the parts that we want to redo, such as the linear template drops along the edges of pavement, change our features, change our surface templates, and then put it all back together and store it as a civil cell. And so we're going to walk through each of those steps together. The first thing that we want to do is we want to actually drop the civil cell status. And so I'm going to go ahead and unpin Project Explorer just to give us a little bit more screen real estate here. And in the taskbar under civil cells, one of the icons is the drop civil cell. Now what I did is I right clicked in here and I opened up the civil cells as a toolbox. And so you'll see that up here. So I have my icons readily available. So the first thing I want to do is I want to drop the civil cell. So I'll select the icon, come down over our civil cell when it highlights, select it. And now you'll see that I do not have that civil cell in there. And to confirm, I can go to Project Explorer into the civil model, expand down under the civil cells, and you'll see that my basic T civil cell no longer exists. I could have also dropped the status in here. If you right click on any civil cell in a drawing, you can select right here to drop the civil cell status. Because we want to convert this over to a rural intersection, I want to delete the linear template drops along the edge of pavement. And so to do that, I just select these particular civil objects and choose my delete key. So we'll do these four entries. The other thing that I want to show you how to do is how do we change the uh, surface template. So right now I have concrete on top of aggregate. Well, let's go ahead and make this a bituminous uh, actual pavement structure. So what I'm going to do here, and I found the easiest way to do this is you can literally just over in your 3D view, uh, you can select the surface template and when you get the context sensitive toolbar you can just choose to delete that surface template drop and so what this leaves us with is all of our horizontal and vertical geometry intact our linear template drops along our edge have been removed and we are now ready to do one final thing before we actually go in and start putting things back in and that is to change our features so I'm going to switch back to my 2D view and I'm going to go to my reference files here and I'm going to turn off the display of the 3D model and so now all I see are the linear features that are going to be shown in my 2D drawing and so right now I have this feature set to road edge of pavement and so let's let's pretend that we want to uh, pick a different feature here based on the standards that we're required uh, to use for our particular client and so instead of road uh, edge of pavement here I'm going to dig down I'm using um, uh, an agency's workspace here from 
uh, Missouri Department of Transportation in this demonstration. So I'm going to go down to my design standards and I'm going to pick roadway and we were using a feature that came uh, directly from the examples workspace and we're going to change this now to uh, the Department, Missouri Department of Transportation's edge of pavement uh, requirements here. So I'm going to select that as our active feature and then when we come over to our taskbar we have under general geometry the ability here to set a feature definition and so if I select that icon then it asks us what feature definition we want to use and I can just choose to use the active feature and make sure that I have that selected and active and then I can give that a name if I wish and just to if you don't know the names you can go back and rename them later and so I'm just going to accept all four of them and so now if I come in and highlight this you'll see that I have the new feature definition assigned and a level and so if I select this now and go to quick properties and if you see the the name here I can change this at any point so I have for example uh, road edge of pavement 8 EOP and then we'll we'll name the other one as such as well and it'll give it a number one and so we'll highlight back over that you can see fill it EOP we'll come back over to here I'm going to do the same thing and you don't have to use an underscore here um, if you don't want to but I just just out of habit I guess I do that so you see I have fill it EOP here and I have also fill EOP here but it knows that it gave it a number one as a, a suffix as as the program is required to do because you can only have one of the same alignment and then just to be consistent we'll come over here we'll call this um, edge of pavement so we'll just abbreviate EOP we'll tab out of that to accept it and then we'll do the same thing over here and we'll call this EOP and then that's going to of course give that a number one on the suffix automatically you'll see there. So the next one I want to go ahead and adjust is this one and right now we have a feature definition here set to road center line. so if I'm going to be consistent with changing over to my client requirements I'm going to go to design we have a scratch geometry so I'm just going to use that one. The main thing that you want to do here is don't on a, on a baseline like this don't use a feature that has the auto export auto annotate you don't want to put those in civil cells that can uh, cause you some problems so be aware of that so we have that one set and then the last one we have here is this uh, seam line so I'm going to select a different feature for the seam line right now I have it just set to road hinge and under design we're going to pick the match line and set that as the correct feature definition and so we have our match line set we have our edges of pavement set and we have our center line set to the proper features that we want for this particular agency. So the next step in the process is to put in our new linear template drops along our edges or we can also apply the surface template to establish the thickness of our pavement based on the standards that we want to utilize. It doesn't really matter which order we do these so I'm just going to go ahead and apply the linear templates first and so to do this I typically like to go over to my taskbar and go down to the 3D geometry and select this icon apply linear template because if you use the icon from the taskbar it basically loops you through the command until you have them all selected and so we'll pick that one and the first thing it's going to do is to locate element to apply the linear template to and so I'm going to select this and then it asks us to select our template and so I'm going to select alt down arrow and it's going to pull up my picker for my templates and I have one prepared here under my um, templates category shoulder with four to one tie slopes and a vertical edge here along the uh, where we tie into our payment structure and so we'll select OK to that accept it with a left mouse click and then we want to make sure and hit the alt key locked to start and accept alt key locked to end and accept and then we pick the side and if we had exterior corners where we didn't have arcs we could set the frequency of drops within the degree value but we don't have any external corners so we can just accept that default and if you want to give it a description you can 
and we'll then we'll let that process and it takes us right back into the command again and so we'll locate our next one and now we can pretty much just walk right through the prompts because it's going to already be selected to all lock to beginning and end and then we'll go over here to the next one doesn't really matter again what order and then last but not least okay so what that did for us was essentially establish the the shoulder off the edge of the pavement and if we had an active terrain model in here you would see that tying to the existing ground but understand that our template itself has a tie to ground in there and so when we actually place the civil cell it will be correct the last thing we want to do before we rebuild this civil cell is we want to apply the thickness to the pavement structure. To do that we simply need to select the terrain model. I find this a little bit easier to do in the 3D model and so I'm just going to come over here and you'll see that I have the terrain model basic T intersection boundary and I'm just going to select that and then it asks me to come over and choose an entry from my context sensitive toolbar and if I hold down right here you're going to see this apply surface template icon and so I'm going to select that and it asks us do we have an external clipping boundary and in this case we don't so we'll say no and then we hit the alt down arrow key combination and I'm going to go actually just pick my rule template and so I have some asphalt pavement here uh, with shoulders and I'm going to pick this particular entry right here and notice this is an entire typical section or a template and that's okay because the way this works is it looks at the insertion point and then goes vertically straight down and so it determines that it has one two three different materials in this template and it understands the thickness of each of those materials based on where those points are and so I'm just going to pick this template and then we will accept that choice and then data point one more time to accept the placement and so now if we take a look here we have essentially a new type of structure applied to this and we have our new pavement we have our new shoulder bituminous and at that point we're pretty much done with the reconstruction we've redefined our edges of pavement features our center line features our seam line features the depth of our uh, terrain model and our, our surface template feature has been redefined and our linear templates along the edges have been redefined. And so then the last step is to uh, recreate the civil cell. And so in our particular civil cell toolbar we have the option here to create a civil cell. And so I'm going to give this a, a name. I'm going to call this basic T. We'll tab out of that and then it asks us for this reference name and this part's a little bit tricky if you mess it up I'm going to show you how to fix it but remember we took a screenshot of the two prompts that we wanted to ask the user and so one of the prompts was the secondary road center line and so if I type that in here before I accept anything secondary road and I'm going to type it exactly like they did and I'm going to tab and so now if I accept the name it's you see how it went back to the old reference name and so this is actually where you want to type it after you accept the name so I'm just kinda of showing you here a couple of tricks so secondary road CL and I'm gonna tab now I come in and I select the secondary road center line actually you see what it did there you see how it went up and picked up new name that's because I have this turned on so I'm going to turn that off uh, before I actually pick that secondary one and I'm going to type it one more time here and hopefully that'll get it right this time and then I'm going to come in and I'm going to pick this and it says to locate the next one and the next one is going to be through road edge of pavement tab and then I'm going to pick this one our placement reference notice how everything highlights if it doesn't highlight then you have some problems with your references that's it so we write reset to accept that we don't have any optional references so we'll reset again and then we will accept with a left mouse click 
And so now if we go into Project Explorer, into our civil model, you're going to see that we have this basic T intersection. Now, we're not done yet. On the Explorer, we want to do a couple of things here. Number one, I'm going to expand out uh, the element information and I'm going to expand out the uh, Project Explorer here. Kind of zoom in, zoom out a little bit on the cell that we're working on. Is there? But what I want to show you are a couple of things. One is when you right-click here and go to Properties, one of the things that you need to check here is under General, valid for placement is yes or no. If this is no, then you've made a mistake. It doesn't like. You need to go try again. Okay. For example, one thing I've seen people do is I've seen them not drop the civil cell status and try to replace linear templates in there or the surface templates. And when they do, that makes it invalid. And so that's why you have to drop it first. So that's good. And then the next thing we want to check is on our reference names, did they actually take? And so you're going to see that, that the through road edge of payment took OK, uh, but I made a mistake here on this one. So I'm just going to rename it now. Um, this is going to be secondary road CL. tab out of that and now you'll see that that prompt uh, will now come as what we have specified. The, the last thing that we want to do is if you want this civil cell to be able to clip out another corridor we have to add that as a clipping reference and so if we come down to our option or our dependent elements and you want to look for the the terrain model not of the existing ground but the if you have it in there but you want to look for the terrain model of the pavement and what you'll do is you'll right click on here and select add as a corridor clipping boundary add as a corridor clipping boundary and then what that will do is under the corridor clipping boundary it'll list that terrain model of the pavement as an option then when you're placing the civil cell it'll ask you or prompt you do you want to clip a corridor with this civil cell so if you don't do that step then this civil cell will not prompt you uh, to, to clip that other corridor. Now, just because you're prompting the user to clip the corridor doesn't mean that you have to. I always think it's a good idea to put this in there. Uh, I highly recommend it um, as, as a suggestion. And so that's pretty much all you have to do. And, and so just as a review, we dropped the civil cell. We deleted our linear template drops. We deleted our surface template. Then we redefined our features of our edges of pavement, our center line, and our match line, making sure that on our center line we did not pick a feature that had auto export and auto annotate turned on. Uh, that's not a good practice. Then we reestablished our new linear template drops along our edge of pavement and along our fillet, and then we reassigned or redefined then our surface template along our terrain that made up the boundaries of our pavement. Then we went in and actually created the civil cell putting in the uh, reference prompt names and after we create the civil cell we checked to make sure it was valid after we knew it was valid then we added it as a corridor clipping boundary so that we can have the civil cell actually clip our main corridor so hopefully you'll find this useful this will work with any civil cell that you are given you just need to drop it remove what you don't want fix what you do want the key point is maintain the geometry as it's been established and then everything else is basically just fluff around the edges and I think if you follow this practice it'll help you tremendously in taking advantage of other people's uh, civil cells and while you're doing this and after you've dropped everything if you want to change the default radius value or the default pavement width before you start putting in the linear templates and the surface templates that's perfectly acceptable as well Best of luck and I hope that you find this video helpful.